Okay, we, uh, one of the things that I had mentioned to you early on <clears throat> was to, um, <clears throat> to try to use the King James Bible. Y'all remember that? <clears throat> and I did it with a purpose. It wasn't because I'm old and you're young and I use King James and you use uh, the new Waterman. No, I was thinking about the new Waterman Bible, the most watered down version yet, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, rather, <clears throat> because of Peter's word usage, I don't know how these other translations will use those words. But in the King James, he is consistent with his words. And so, uh, yes, you, of course, you may look at other translations to maybe help figure uh, certain things out or whatever. I have no problem with that. <clears throat> I have right here on my iPad a number of translations, quite a few. And, uh, <clears throat> but for our purposes, um, it will serve you better if you're using the King James Version once we get into, which I don't think we will tonight, but once we get into the, um, yeah, starting to, the, the definitions and then comparing, because it's not just the definitions, it's the ability within the book to compare his words. And uh, where over here it may not be plain, you start seeing him use it here and here, and you'll go, oh, oh, so that's what he means. He's actually telling me what he means. But I, you know. So if your translation is using two or three different words for the same word that Peter's using in the King James, you're going to, it's going to throw you off. That's all I can say. All right. So your homework last time to this date <clears throat> was that um, I had put uh, the patterns on the board. Y'all remember that? The pattern? Or I had mentioned the, the patterns and I had put um, the cyclical uh, representations <clears throat> uh, showing cycles. Um, and, and so let me make this plain, particularly in the first chapter, let me make this plain. The patterns that I told you, um, the one, two, and three patterns that are basically one pattern just developed as we went from one to three, um, are true and they will, they will be, uh, how shall I say this? They will be about the subject that we have been pressing in for, but they will not necessarily declare with clarity, particularly in the first chapter, declare with clarity the one thing that Peter shares over and over. Okay. <clears throat> but by the, the little patterns that I gave you, the things within the pattern, you can identify those patterns, and then later as you get into the book, you'll see literally the meat put on the bones. You'll see that one thing said in cycles throughout the rest of the book, and we'll be able to take that, therefore, one explanation and take it to the first chapter and lay it over the patterns that you saw based on what I showed you and go, Oh my God, that's what he was saying. Even though he didn't come out yet and really say it, he used the pattern and he used the, the thoughts and these are the answers to those. So, um, it's not as complicated as it seems unless you don't have somebody telling you how to do this because it was so complicated. Um, but it, but I, my heart's desire is not just to teach you something and walk off. My heart's desire is for you to faithfully, let's follow this through, 
and search the scriptures and let the Lord show it to you. That's my desire, okay? So that's why we're taking the time. And <clears throat> I mean, if it really is one thing, once we really hit the one thing, you'll know what it is and you can, you'll be able to see it. But I will say this too, again, <clears throat> maybe a little dif different words, that one thing sounds a lot like things that you already know. It sounds like it's talking about, well, I mean, we know that the heart of it is death and resurrection, right? In the pattern, we, we mentioned that, right? But see, where, where do we go with that? That's the key. And if we go with what we've been taught in the past, or, as I said, if we go where Paul taught us, we're going to miss it. All right? <clears throat> Paul heard from the Lord from so many angles that it's incredible. You, you know that. He heard so many realities of Christ, and he brought it. But Peter at least in this first epistle, he just got one thing to say, and he believes that one thing is as, as, as important as anything Paul said. <clears throat> and, and I would say that he emphasizes it more and better than Paul. Paul only gets into it a couple of places. He doesn't really expound too much. Peter spent his life just soaking in this until he got it and then he found the mind of the Lord in it and then in finding the mind of the Lord that was it that's what he that's what he shared so so what I want to do in this class to preserve my voice is to use yours and the way I want to use yours is I'd like I'd like to know that some of you did the homework, okay? So, um, this is always scary. How many of you didn't do the homework or you looked and you couldn't find that one pattern? Raise your hand. Okay. Okay. Okay, all 27 of you in here. People on Skype, I don't know what the problem is. It's all these 27 people. Just kidding. <clears throat> Um, therefore, the redeemed of the Lord, <laughs> I guess I shouldn't just, hi, Alana, let's see, you'd be right here then, wouldn't you? And Celia, Julie, Faf, and the Sharon, Sharon, who my just spoke to on texting and then got to see her. Um, so why, we're, why are we going to go over these patterns? Why are we going to, if you can spot them, even if it's in the first chapter where it's not really saying what it is exactly, you will be able to spot it in the rest of the book and the, the cohesion will start happening. It'll all start coming together. I mean, that's my desire for you is that this book comes together and you just, whoa, there it is, you know. And, uh, and you know, I'm not sure fully where Jason's going to go, but the little bit he shared with me just a while ago, he came from a, a little different angle, but something that he had heard in this class and it was taking him in. It was taking him in, into the patterns, and maybe even into the truth. I don't know. So let me begin <clears throat> with saying, how many of you that did find some of the patterns, how many of you found any in the first chapter? Raise your hand. OK, that's great. Praise God. That's really good. OK, um, how many of you found um, found it in as early as beginning, say, with the third chapter. Raise your hand. I mean, th I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Third verse. Third verse. Third verse. Okay. Good. Wow. 
Praise the Lord. Okay, now I'm encouraged. Because starting with the third verse on down to about verse 18, he just hardly says anything, and yet he is saying it as loud as he can without just declaring it. All right. Who would like to come up then and uh, share on the, the pattern that you saw beginning with verse 3? Who would like to do that? Okay, then I'll call on somebody. I love Chris's answer, so I'm going to ask Chris to come up here and share. Um, so you were saying that um, number one is <clears throat> hope that he gets the glory. Uh -huh. And in verse 3, chapter 1, at the end it says, um, His great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Um, so I, I felt like that kind of matched up. Okay. So... Now, the, the pattern should go ahead and show that it begins with a hope, but it works on through. Do you have the rest of it? Um, I don't hear, but in um, a later chapter, I do. Okay, of course you do. It's okay. Good. No, no, that's good. Okay, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Um, anyone from that verse 3, because it's, it really is perfect. Yeah, Scott. In the same place where Chris started, I found that. But then in, down, uh, down in <clears throat> verse 6, I found, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. And so the, I found that the testing, the, 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 um, the trials, um, and the willingness to go through trials, um, and the the hope in verse seven, the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, might be found unto praise, honor, and glory of, at the appearing of Jesus Christ. At the appearing. Of Jesus yes. Christ. There it is. Anybody have something to expand on that? <clears throat> Kelly, come on up. Um, well, in the third cycle, the fourth one is that it gives hope that the suffering and death brings forth his nature. And so uh, the three that came from the second pattern, Scott read, but the fourth is added in there in verse 9. Can anybody read that to me? Because I didn't bring my Bible up. Yeah, receiving the end of your faith. And I just saw that as the coming forth of his nature. I don't know. All right, that was good. All three of them added something in there, and it's all those things that they just mentioned are the hope, are the, are the death, if you will, the resurrection, which is Christ in this case, um, and um, uh, the appearing ultimately is that Christ is seen and glorified. Um, so that's... That's really good because to me, that first one was the hardest. But of course it would be because he just isn't saying what the, what the meat of it is yet. He, but he's given us a pattern. And, and I really thought, wow, this is so cool because Paul wouldn't do this. <laughs> you know, he's, he, he gives us a pattern and then it, he'll, he'll follow it up with the pattern and he'll follow up with a pattern, and each time it's cyclical because it goes through that pattern, but it's cyclical throughout the book, meaning he's just saying the same thing, but he expands on it at the, at the bigger circles. You all remember when I drew that on there? The bigger circles, mm. man, there's where he hits it. But then he'll go back to the smaller examples, and if you know the pattern, you'll just go, he is not leaving the subject. It's amazing. Anybody have anything else on that last on that first one that we just did? Okay. 
Um, anyone have one uh, after verse 3 that's another cycle? Yes, come on up, Carol. We'll just stick with that. Um, it starts in verse 10. Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching what and what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed that not to themselves but to us they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven things which the angels desire to look into. And um, I just saw that the, the prophets had to, um, they, they had to search and they had to travail and they had to, um, to try and figure things out so that they could share with us and that they didn't get to partake in the stuff, but that it would be something that we would partake of and, and um, that we could understand it through the sufferings of Christ that they shared with us. Amen. Okay. Yeah. You want to come up? <clears throat> uh, just, I'm actually just sort of repeating what Kale said, but as soon as she read that, I just saw the second pattern with it starts with a hope for Jesus to get glory. God revealed that hope to them and then seeing that it wasn't to them, but to un unto others, they still, you know, suffered the persecution and death that often came to the prophets uh, in their time. And even, even they had hope for the hope, even if they didn't truly know the hope. They had hope for the hope to come unto us, and that they were willing to go through persecution and death for us to get that hope. Amen. All right. Does, did anybody get uh, in this second pattern, because it does start with verse 10, did anybody in this second pattern get a shorter version of what has been shared? Come on up. I got the, um, within that, the two-point cycle, um, and the two-point cycle is suffering and death, and then resurrection out of that suffering and death. And what verses? Uh, in verse um, 10. 10, 11, actually more like 11, it's too little, okay, um, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. And that's the two-point cycle right there, is the sufferings of Christ. And if I may say that what that did, it, a little light bulb went on that every time someone from the Old Testament is mentioned, they are displaying that. Or if it's a quote from the Old Testament, it's going to testify of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow in us. So, that's so read verse 10 and 11 together of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Okay. Is that kind of what you were looking yeah. for? Okay. Yeah, it is. It's exactly okay. what I was looking for because I, um, <clears throat> uh, the second pattern I saw was uh, chapter 1, verse 10 and 11, that it was, it was simply that, because the, the amount that Carol read, <laughs> there's more stuff in that, you know what I mean? There's more patterns actually hidden within that. All right, um, someone else starting uh, after, doesn't have to be verse 12, but starting after verse 12, uh, anybody? Uh, have a pattern pretty quick to that, or beginning after verse, uh, including or after verse 12. Nobody? Okay. Uh, okay, so I, see, did you, or oh, you did. Would you bring me, bring me that? 
<clears throat> my problem with my notes on all of this is I am all over the place with because I was doing all of this study and, and writing in different locations and pencil and paper and iPad and, you know, in my, my uh, uh, phone and all this stuff. All right, so verse um, 13. Somebody got that one? Did you? Would you want to come up and share with us so I don't... Come on, man. <laughs> Bring it. Well, I'm proud of you for, for spotting that. Okay. okay. <clears throat> ah, there it is. Yeah. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And then it continues, obedient children, not conforming yourselves to former lusts, uh, etc. Okay, let's just verse 13. Yeah. I thought it was a pattern all yeah, by itself. The, the first one, yeah. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. I, I did. I thought I, I was going to say that. Yeah. I had everything in it. Look at it. It's amazing. It really is. When you, start, <laughs> when you start to look at it, it really is. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for having that, my brother. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, just, just soak in verse 13 for a while and think about that. I mean, since Dennis was the only one who really identified that, soak in that verse and watch how it grows and develops all the way to the fulfillment, from the hope to the fulfillment of Christ. So, great, great. This is exactly what I was wanting. And because if you're seeing this, then it's going to explode when you get the, the true deal, what this thing is really about. Because, it, again, it sounds like everything we've ever been taught on all these other areas, but it's not. It's not. It's, this is very, very specific. All right, so let's go ahead and say, anybody find a pattern starting with verse 14? Hello? <laughs> I, I hear you breathing. I know you're out there. I know you're out there because I can hear you breathing. <laughs> All right, well... Um, Let's look at verse 14. Um, 1, 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Okay, so this is beginning to... <coughs> Um, develop the hope as he is so be ye let, let that be built into you <clears throat> and what I did was I went all the way down to 17 because that is written be ye holy for I am holy and if ye call on the father who without respect of persons judging according to every man's work pass the time of your sojourner here in fear all right now, this, these verses, again, sound like what we think they sound like. They're not saying what, what we think because we don't know the subject. So when it's talking about <clears throat> passing your time in fear, it's talking about entering in to the death portion. Okay? Okay. And then I jumped and, you know, but I jumped the fulfillment of that starting with verse 18. Now, y'all may have already found verse 18 all by itself, but I went from verse 18, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things. See, so now it's building on what is eternal, what is 
permanent. And that little thought, corruptible, permanent, eternal, runs through the whole book. Runs through the whole book. You capture that, and you're going to start opening, that thing's going to start opening up to you. And, uh, and one, one good way to do that is to start looking up all the uses of the word corruptible. But corruptible is not the only word that says it, because he'll use different words also from time to time to add in, to show permanence compared to what's temporal. And again, it's not all the things we're thinking. It's not, it's not just found in those areas. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and stop right there. Anybody found anything from verse 17 down as a pattern or, or before that, if before or after? What's the closest thing anybody's got <clears throat> as far as a pattern? Okay, Mallory? That's what mine, I didn't want to take it that far. Mine does. Mine definitely does. Because it's building, whereas like verse 13 just puts it all in one verse. But that span of verses is building that until you look at it and you go, well, there it is. Yeah. That one that's, I went from verse 13 to verse 23 and I have all four points. Okay. No, no, that's fine, but if you look right here, I go from verse 14 to 21. <laughs> so come on up. <laughs> that's great. Because, see, where are you going to figure that out unless the Lord helps you and unless you're starting to at least understand what the deal is? So I took a little cue from the chart last week where you said that some of the circles overlap, and I took that to mean that... Um, Sometimes the last point of one cycle is the number one point of the next that's one. exactly what okay. I Okay, so that's kind of what I did. I took verse 13, um, hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's the hope of the first, like of this four-point cycle that I found. Yeah. And then verses 14 through 17, um, not fashioning yourselves according to former lusts, but being holy as he is holy, and to pass this time of your sojourn here in fear, all as the suffering, mm -hmm. and um, being willing to you know, be brought under suffering and death um, as obedient children. And um, then the third point is um, the hope to suffer correctly. And I kind of skipped quite a bit and went to verse 21, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God, seeing that you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. I made that suffering, the hope to suffer correctly because you've purified your soul in the suffering. And then the last point is um, gives hope that the suffering or death brings forth his nature. And I got that as the... Um, Verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God that lives and abides forever. That's what I got. Okay. Now, it doesn't have to be that. You might have found a pattern within that, those verses or something. What's the closest anyone came to those verses? Did you find something within them or? or? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. That's, that's what we want. Uh, I think it's cool because pattern number one is the simplest. So in all of them, you just can probably find that one verse that deals with that one pattern. And like in that 21, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, just immediately just death, suffering and death and glory out of that. Mallory's talking about the overlap. Remember, I was when I was drawing those circles, I overlapped some of them because they do overlap. This will be a pattern and end with this thing, but this one right here will help move the next pattern into place. <clears throat> so, um, uh, so I 
the next pattern that I saw was verse 20 and 21. So remember, see how they overlap the last pattern, verse 20 and 21, who verily was foreordained, okay? So this is, is the hope that's being foreordained before the foundation of the world. <clears throat> now it's being manifest in these last times for you. <clears throat> but who's that talking about that's manifest? It's talking about the, the Lamb. It's talking about Christ crucified. It was manifest for you um, who by him, by him, Christ crucified, do believe in God. Yeah, it's really good, isn't it? Um, uh, who by him do believe in God. And here's the God you believe in. The God that raised the dead. So there's the death. And here, that's the hope that he raises the dead. So it ends with the hope. You see that? Now, it doesn't use the word hope, but that's what you have to do. You can't just look, look for the words in every case. You're looking for a theme. You're looking for a, a, a mentality that, that Peter uses. And, and because Peter is so clear, once you understand his way of thinking, he's so clear, it's like this. It really is. It's just... It's just you know, it's uh, orderly, but only according to his mind. It's not orderly, like linear in, in his thinking. It's circular. It's cyclical, cyclical. But it, but it is. Once you start understanding his mind, then it's very. It starts falling into place, and that's why we're taking the time to do this one. All right. Anybody else uh, got a cycle? A pattern, I guess I'll say, in chapter 1. Really? Okay. How about chapter, what do you got? Chapter 2, you have one in chapter 2? Can I ask where it starts? Um, yeah, it starts in verse 2 and ends in verse 7. Okay, come on. So it's the four, it's the third cycle with the four parts. And okay, so hope for Jesus to get glory is chapter two, verse two. Um, the hope is the newborn babes desiring the pure milk of the word that you may grow by it. So there's a growth, a hope for a certain kind of growth. And the second point causes willingness to experience suffer, suffering or death is verse three. If so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, and I had tasted, tasted as um, they've eaten the lamb, and that lamb is willing to suffer, so they've tasted of that nature. Um, and the third point, hope to suffer correctly. Um, I have five. Um, ye also, as the living stones are built up, a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, um, to suffer correctly, to offer up that they would be an offering by the right spirit, acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So that's hope to suffer correctly. And the fourth, it gives hope that the suffering death brings forth his nature. Um, and that's kind of six, seven, and eight, just wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. Uh, he that believeth will not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, unto you, therefore, who believe, he is precious. And he is, so it's like those who believe, he's being formed in them. They're being... He, they're bringing forth, they're being built into the rock, and that it's coming forth there as it's being manifest in them. Yeah. Well, I didn't, I actually missed that one as a pattern. <clears throat> um, but it is. It is. It, um, I mean, especially when you get to the end and you hear the fulfillment of the hope coming to pass. It's clearly that same pattern and um so that's 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 good okay anybody else in chapter two part of the pattern going once did you have one mallory scott did you raise your hand or is that me well come on
for this thank worthy if a man for conscience toward God where I mean that's kind of the hope endure grief uh, forward for the for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endureth grief suffering wrongfully uh, so there's a suffering for the glory is is it if when you're buffeted for your faults you take it patiently but if when you you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently. This is acceptable to God, and that's suffering correctly. And that, that was all I saw in there. Okay, what verses were there? That was uh, 19 and 20. 19 and 20. Okay. Um, anyone else? What do you, which, where you got it at? Mine kind of overlaps with Kelly's. Mine was at 5 through 9. Okay, come on. Yeah. Verses 5 through 9. see how they do overlap. I mean, not all of them do, but the ones that do, they can be used for two different patterns. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I was kind of seeing like verse 5, you're as living stones built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, in order to offer up spirit. So it's like this, this is happening with the hope yeah. that you will offer up Ex sacrifice is acceptable to God right, just, by Jesus just, Christ. Just, let me point that out. Do you see that it doesn't use the word hope, but it is laying forth the hope, and, and we should be looking for that hope, and then in that hope comes willingness to enter into sufferings, and in that suffering, that's probably where you're going with all this, right? Yeah, because it says, because then it starts to say, Wherefore also it is contained in Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief's cornerstone, elect and precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. And I th and um, and believe is kind of a hope word too. And um, unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. So you're now you're willing to be joined to this cornerstone that is a crucified cornerstone, and the death comes with the builders who disallow. Like you're you're being joined, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same has made the head of the corner a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. So that's the death, um, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto they were appointed. But ye are chosen generation. So that's like the hope for the hope in the su in the suffering, the hope that um, you will show forth the praises of Him who's called you. Um, and showing forth the praises of him being like glorifying God by him coming forth out of you in his nature. Or you, you know, a royal priesthood, meaning you 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 offered up the you offered up the lamb in the suffering. It's like a shorter version within Kelly's in yeah. a sense, which is which is cool. Okay, I uh I don't have it marked here, but I have a, um, a thought here in chapter 2, verse 11. And 12. <laughs> Glory to God. Okay, verse 11 and 12. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, I beseech you. Okay, so there's a hope going on. You see that? I beseech you, as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Now, of course, what are you thinking when we read that? You're thinking what? the regular Christian would think. But that's not what he's referring to, okay? But he's saying, okay, so not that. Verse 12, having your manner of life, your conversation, remember that word is a, a outdated usage there. It means manner of life. Having your manner of life honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak evil 
against you as evildoers or, or speak against you as evildoers, they may by, may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of his visitation. <laughs> Folks, that's a death and that's a resurrection. Particularly, now see, some of these you may be missing because you don't know what the real full deal is. So you'll, you'll, you'll be missing these, but when we say it, if we go back and look at some of this, you'll go, there it is. It's as plain as day right there. But it's his wording. His wording sounds like a nominal Christian until you compare the word usage throughout, and you'll find his definition is not that. Okay? Remember that. It's a, it's a huge thing, I just said. This is one of the huge keys to understand the book of, of First uh, Peter. All right? And then uh, let's look in verse um, 13 and 14. <clears throat> Submit yourselves... To every, man, every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king is supreme, or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. Do you see there's a similar thing working here? And for the praise of them that do well, for so is the will of God, with, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Okay, so... That all, again, sounds like the regular nominal teaching, be good and don't do this. And that way, when you're, since you're such a good person, it's going to have, it's going to have an effect on somebody. But that is not what he's saying because, you know, some of you have been good and you haven't affected anybody, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, so. Uh, but then verse 15 through 17, uh, for so is the will of God. Ah, here we go. That with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. There's the glory to the Lord. And there's the glory to others because you entered into something that will do that, that will have that effect. And this is one of the main things that Peter is teaching, that his, his little area that he has held on to, he believes that this will change things. He, he really believes it, you know. But he believes, he believes it. See, we have a very broad view of certain things. And he's got a very focused view that relates to specific things. And when it's there and added, every time you're going to just go through this book and go, there it is again. He's, by, by that comes this, you know. And then from this comes glory to the Lord. So, um, okay, anyone else have any patterns in two? Uh, do you have one, Kelly, or you? Okay, come on. Did I say verse two, chapter two? Chapter two. Yeah. Chapter two, verse 20. Um, for what glory is it if when you are buffeted for your faults and take it patiently, and do well and suffer for it, there's the death, that it is acceptable with God, that's the glory. It's just a little bit. No, no, that's, that's yeah. it. That's the, what the first little version of the pattern I gave that were just two things, that fulfills that. But, you know, that would fulfill all of them because whether they have four things or three things, they always have those two things. <laughs> all right, anybody else in, in the second chapter? Yeah, come on. It was uh, 7 through 12. It's like, unto you therefore which believe he is precious, uh, but unto them which disobedient the stone which the 
Builders disallow, the same is made, the head of the corner. So I see that as the hope. That same one that was disallowed is, is now their hope. And this hope is what people are going to persecute them for because it kind of goes back to the, those who persecuted. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient. And that's the suffering that comes from that. But it's the hope that that, uh, that hope inside them would bring forth Christ, his nature, that he would be viewed. And uh, it ends in verse 12 saying, which they shall behold not your glory, but the glory of God in his visitation. That's perfect. Amen. Carol, do you have one? Um, mine kind of tacks on to Kelly's. Sure, come on. Mine started in um, verse 18, where it says, Servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. And then verse 19, because I felt like the, um, that the hope was that, they, that we would be submissive, kind of like Hagar and Sarah, yes. and, and to... Um, later in our lives in that thing. But it's commendable if because of conscience towards God, you endure suffering and grief. So there's the taking it in the right spirit. And then what Kelly said after that. That's great. That's really good. <clears throat> Praise God. Okay, somebody else. Yeah. No? Come on with it. <laughs> what? Um, where is it? There it is. Um, verse 21, um, for even he here and two were you called, uh, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. And um, so that's the hope, um, that you should follow in his steps is the part of the hope, but kind of the willingness to suffer as well. Um, it says, um, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. And so that's um, the hope to suffer correctly as Jesus suffered in that same spirit. And then um, 24 and 25 um, it says, who his own self bear our sins and his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live under righteousness by whose stripes you are healed. For you were a sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. And 24 has the two one just by itself. Just Jesus uh, bore our sins, and then the resurrection is that us, we live under righteousness. But really, with reference to us, and this thing, the whole cycle applying to us, um, we're following in his steps and suffering and hoping to suffer correctly because um, uh, God has a hope that we would live unto righteousness, you know, and that's the um, life of Christ being manifest in us. So. Okay, anyone else have... Uh have one. <clears throat> Is that it? <clears throat> no, if you have, do you have something in chapter three? Yeah. Uh, no one else in chapter two? Okay, come on, Scott. Um, well, I, I think there's three here, but um, one starting in chapter 14, uh, or I mean chapter 14, <laughs> verse 14, sorry. Chapter 14, yeah, First Peter chapter 14. <laughs> uh, yeah, verse 14. Uh, uh, but, the, and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, and and I saw in that just the, um, and I may be starting late on this one, but I, um, anyway, uh, I just happy are ye, and and that's where I saw the hope, and be not afraid of the terror, neither of the, be troubled, 
but, but sanctify the Lord in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man. Um, and I, I actually saw this, um, the suffering and the hope in that first verse. But anyway, uh, anyway, the, um, be ready to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And I saw that as the, the resurrection. And then in uh, starting in 16, uh, having a good conscience that, um, that whereas they speak evil of you, and having a good conscience being the hope, uh, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you, your good conversation in Christ. Uh, for it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well doing than for evil doing. And there's the suffering. For Christ also hath suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. And there's the resurrection. And then. Um, Starting in, you know, you can read the whole book and yeah, the yeah. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, this is the book. <laughs> My, yeah. Kelly, you had one something. Yeah, three one. So, all right, this is the third cycle with the four parts, and the first one is chapter 3, verse 1, and that's hope for Jesus to get glory. And so the hope is that the wives be subject, subjection to their husbands, so the hope is, is for this glory to come in the situation. Um, and the second one is causes willingness to experience suffering or death, and so the willingness is that they may be um, without the word be one, which is a willingness to do it by the lamb who opens not his mouth. Um, and the number three is hope to suffer correctly, and three is while they behold your chaste conduct coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be the outward man, but that suffering correctly is having to do with the spirit in which they're carrying themselves, the spirit of the lamb. And then four, it, it gives hope that the suffering death brings forth his nature. And it says in, in the end of verse four that, that this is in the sight of God of great price, and that has to be the coming forth of Christ in his nature. That's all I've got there. Amen. Anyone else in chapter three? Anyone get to chapter four and come up with anything? Okay, the hold up on that. Anybody get to chapter 5 and have anything? Okay, so we got to chapter 4, and we got the same two people. So Scott and Kelly, both of y'all come down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you do? I guess I missed your hand. Oh, I, I didn't hear it rattling. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, come on down. Um, well, the, uh, there were several different places, but the, the one that I saw real clearly was in verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it. Um, as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. And um, I just saw, um, you know, this speaking, um, as being the, um, the hope. Um, and then, um, Wait a minute. Okay, I see what I'm. I see what I did. Okay, so um, and then it goes on into verse 12. Actually, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, um, you shall be made gl be glad also with exceeding joy. Um, just. Uh, the, the first verse, 11, really being the hope, and then 
the um, obviously the fiery trial being the suffering, um, and then the partakers of Christ's sufferings is suffering correctly, and then uh, the glory that shall be revealed being the resurrection. Okay, it's the third one again, and it's, um, so, uh, verses 12 and 13, and then, all right, so the first one is hope for Jesus to get glory in a specific way, and that's 12. Beloved, think it not strange, and so them thinking it not strange is a hope that's rising up in them, Um, and then causing willingness to experience suffering or death, that's but rejoice. So instead of being upset and calling a strange fire, they're willing to go into the suffering with a rejoicing spirit. Um, Verse 3, okay, so hope to suffer correctly. Uh, That's partakers of Christ's suffering. So if they do it through Christ, they're suffering correctly. Um, And then 4, it gives hope the suffering death brings forth his nature, and that is when his glory shall be revealed. That's him coming forth. Now, do 4 and then 5. No, do your chapter 4 one and then do your chapter 5. So um, um, I found that three-part cycle in 1 Peter 4, 14 through 19. In uh, verse 14, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, and that's hope for Jesus to get glory, if you're reproached uh, for his name. And then... Um, um, the willingness to experience sufferings really kind of goes through uh, 15 through 18. It kind of really describes the suffering of what it isn't and what it is and the right spirit of the suffering. And then in verse 19, it says, Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. And that's um, how the suffering is handled, gives hope for the hope. Um, And then in uh, 1 Peter 5... Let's see. Verse 10. Um, again, three points. God called us to eternal glory by Christ Jesus, and that's ho- a hope for him to get Jesus to get glory. And then after that, you have suffered a while. Hope causes willingness to experience sufferings. Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. How we handle the suffering is hope for the hope. For the Father glorified by his given Son in a, as a sacrifice in us. Amen. All right, well, from what, what we can determine from this class is that um, it appears that we are starting to at least identify a certain pattern throughout, throughout the whole book. Um, maybe in certain areas it's not as identifiable and that's the places where we're going to have to be we're going to have to do our due diligence to start comparing words and finding um, his meanings and and it's you know really uh, Peter is not like Paul I mean he's not like saying a whole lot of words and you know a lot of stuff like that he's got a, he's got his set of words and his set of words are consistent. They're very consistent. But again, to understand the first chapter, you're going to have to take first chapter words and go through the other chapters and say, okay, he's using it here this way. You were doing that with uh, glory, weren't you, Jason? Yeah. And, it's, and it works. It works. He said, "There's only one place when glory was mentioned that it didn't. Uh, what was what was your statement? Uh, there was like one place where like it didn't follow the pattern because every single time there was our, he mentioned glory, there was a suffering or death before it. Right. And the only time it wasn't mentioned was man's glory, yeah. and it was the glory <laughs> instead of death and glory, it was glory and death. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, so, so see, that was just one word. He just decided to take one word, the word glory, because he said, well, you spoke, you know, it hit me when you said glory, that it, it would, the end result would bring him glory. And so in his mind, I'm sure he's thinking, well, I want to bring glory to God, so I'm going to search out this word. And it led him to all of those places, and then it led him to a contrast when the, that word was used in relationship to man, and the contrast was just the opposite of the tellingness, if you will, of all of those other places where the word was used. That's just one example of inroads into his understanding. Now... There are um, so many other points that you need to check out the words. Uh, there are simple words. There are simple words that are consistent, and their definitions show up after the first chapter. So, you, so one of the advantages of this is that once you start just looking up the words, and it's only five chapters, you know, you start looking up the words you start seeing his use over here, then you can take it to a place, chapter one, where it didn't make sense, or, or sections within each chapter when you get stumped. Because you, you will get stumped, because you will. And you'll go, well, then how does this fit? But if you can take those words, or, or look at the words that he's using there, and go, okay, well, I don't get this, but then you start looking up how he used those words, all of a sudden, it's like, you know what it's like? It's like all of a sudden, the clouds move, and you go, oh, my God. Yes. Yes. And, he, and you'll go, one of the things that will keep guiding your heart is you'll go, he's consistent. He doesn't, he's not like Paul can, you know, and then, oh, the depth and the length and the height and the breadth, and you're just going, I just want to understand the word do, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, that's it. You, you, you've come to the right man. Peter will help you with that. But you gotta, you gotta stick with the man. His, his word uses his definitions. If you stick with it, you'll find the man's heart. And if you find his heart, the theme will cover in the volume of the book. It'll be one theme, and you'll know it, and you'll, and, and you'll figure it out. And another thing just to say, and that is that um, one thing that you are not aware of, but as each person got up here and shared one of those uh, patterns, when you got to, <coughs> excuse me, I need to quit soon. When you got to the part about, the death, what you didn't notice, no matter where people were at, no matter what the subject was other than seeing the pattern, there was a phrase that he used for the death, and it, in this case, it wasn't the phrase. He has about, I'm going to venture 15 phrases that mean the same thing for the death. But if you look at it, because you did, you looked at it, you did this, you looked at it, and you, when you got to that phrase, you said that represents the death of the lamb, or my death with him, or whatever, right? But what you didn't notice is, maybe if you got up here three times, that you got to three different places, and it was a different phrase for that, but it all did represent the same thing. Okay? If you can register that, it'll help because then you'll go, okay, I don't, have to, I don't have to search out the definition of this phrase. I just need to see it in the context of here's the hope, um, uh, here's the, the, the death, here's, and then when it's got the death, I look at that phrase. And if you could just do it three times so that you could have it in three witnesses, find where it's talking about the death. Look at the phrase that identifies it, write it down, go to another place, write it down, go to another place, and you'll go, these all represent the same thing. He's not complicated. You just have to know that he's using, for that one area, he's pretty much 
using a lot of different phrases that mean the same thing. Okay, so this last little bit that I've just told you, this can empower you, you know, and you can always get the tape, right? They can always get copies of it and, and just listen to this last part, if nothing else. Okay, let's pray. Father, we, we're on a journey and we want to know your son. We want to know what Peter, why he exists, why he came to us, as it were, in First Peter. Why, why this man, why, why what his message is that we, can, that we can know you and be with you in a way that maybe we haven't really done that. So we ask you not to just let us see patterns that haven't, spoken the truth to us yet not to just let us let us feel good that we spotted it in many locations without really seeing the substance of what they really mean show us your heart in this show us Peter's heart in why he stuck with one subject show us the power of it show us the life of it and let it transform us in another area of our life and our walk. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Keep searching, okay? Don't give up. We hadn't found it yet. <laughs>